that. Good morning, my name is Shannon Walling. I'm from the All Promise campaign. Um, this is Lieutenant Phil Cooper. He also works with me with the campaign. And so you're probably wondering why Lieutenant is working on the campaign, and I'll tell you why. So we're, we are what is called a loaned executive. Later, United, they changed it, and I can't seem to remember it. So we are borrowed from different state departments. He's from the California Highway Patrol, and I'm from the Department of Motor Vehicles. So that's our regular day, you know, what we do all the time. And then we are loaned out to this campaign to run it to make sure that it goes smoothly and successfully. And because there's almost 300,000 employees, state employees that this touches, they need a lot of help with the campaign to run it. OK, so thank you for being here. Um, David, and how do you say his last name? Bully. David Bully and Christy Bell are your um, department chairs. And then you are key campaigners. And as much as, as they do wonderful work and uh, Phil and I do wonderful work, you are the people that really run the campaign because you're handing out the forms, you're getting them back, you're making sure that everything's done correctly and getting them submitted. So we want to thank you for doing that to begin with. Okay. So I think we're going to try to get the PowerPoint up, but in the meantime, you have a slide, a copy of the slide deck. So if you'd like to follow along, that'd be great. So we're going to go over um, what our promise is, how it works, a look back on previous years, what we're looking for the, in the future, um, how we facilitate the program, your roles and responsibilities, and then completing the pledge forms and getting them back. Okay? And please feel free, if you have any questions, please feel free to, to ask as we go along. There will be a question and answer session at the end, but I always find that you forget your questions by the end of the presentation. Okay. So what is our promise? It was established in 1957 by Assemblyman Augustus Freeman Hawkins. And what he decided was is that it would be best for all state employees to um, be able to give back through a campaign to the nonprofit of their choice. So he put it into law. Okay. And it, it allows the opportunity for every state employee to be able to have a payroll deduction um, and to choose the charity that they want to give to. Okay. So it, the way the program works is that the state um, Department of General Services contracts through the United Way Capital, California Capital Region for the campaign. So the state has there's, there's different um, organizations that run campaigns. The state chooses the United Way Capital Region to do it. And what that does, good morning, is it facilitates departmental campaigns. So, you know, for your agency, you're going to have a fair, you pass out the pledge forms, you get them back, and, you know, that's, that's what we're, we're doing to help you do that. Um, they also, once they get the money from your payroll, they distribute it to the nonprofits. And they provide ongoing support and um, uh, support with volunteers. And they act as the fiscal agent. Okay. So what are the benefits of um, um, donating to this campaign? Our promise binds all state workers together. So it's, again, one campaign for 300,000 employees. You can donate to any recognized 501c3. It's only a minimum of $5 a month. Um, a lot of agencies compete between each other. Department of Motor Vehicles competes with Caltrans. Caltrans competes with California Highway Patrol. So we try to up the... Um, the amounts that we, we uh, collect, and we try to do a friendly competition between, I don't know, I know Department of Real Estate kind of broke off from you guys recently. So you might, I don't know, next year you might want to compete with them. Just saying, because they're ready to compete with you. I just came from them, we came from them um, a couple weeks ago, and they, they really want to see where their numbers go because they're new. It provides the ease of giving a one-time donation or a monthly donation through your pay payroll. 
So you don't have to worry about cutting a check once a year, once a month, or um, you know, sending uh, uh, some kind of payment to your nonprofit. You can just do it right through your payroll. It starts at the beginning of the year, and it goes through the end of the year, and that's why we have this campaign season. And the dollars to nonprofits actually go further when the donations are made monthly. And why is that? Because they know what to expect. They can forecast, they can predict, they can do their, their budget for the year based on that they know you're going to contribute whatever amount you choose. And it also allows for retirees to donate too once they retire from state service. So in 2017, statewide, over $6 million was raised for the Our Promise campaign through payroll deduction. Out of over 290,000 employees, the participation rate was about 11%. Now, I don't know if David has shared it with you or not, but Department of Consumer Affairs raised $85,295. Very impressive, very impressive. You had 451 donors out of 3,300 employees, and your participation rate was 14%. So I don't know, David, um, do you have a goal for this year? Um, there is a goal. Do I remember what it is? That's Not okay. Just to increase your, your participation, I'm sure. So, you know, can you imagine? So you, last year you had 14%. If you got it raised up to 18 to 20% at a minimum of $5 a month per, per do, uh, pledge, what would that be, right? So you can just increase it right from there. So the goal overall statewide is to have 15% participation. Um, remember I said it was 11%. So we're just trying to raise up the entire state by 4% which isn't really hard. It's, it's pretty easy to do. Okay, so the key campaign goal, dates, excuse me, um, for the entire statewide um, campaign, we had a kickoff at the state capitol on August 29th, and the, the campaign begins September 1st, and it ends October 31st. That's when everything has to be back to the United Way Our Promise office. Now, David has other dates, and he can either, um, I think he's going to send out an email explaining those if he hasn't already. Um, I think you guys are getting some of your forms today, and he's got due dates and so forth. So um, either he can speak to that or he can send the email. Okay. So the key connector roles and responsibility, this is where you guys come in. Um, you have to sign a confidential agreement form and you know again your chairs David and Christy will go over that with you if they haven't already but basically all we're asking for you to do is to sign that you won't share information with your co-workers your family your friends and that when you see a pledge form you keep that information confidential okay you know we Privacy and security is very, very um, um, heightened right now with social security numbers and so forth. So that's why we ask you to protect these forms. Don't leave them out on your desk. Don't take them home with you. Make sure they're locked up and so forth so that people don't um, accidentally get their numbers out into the public, okay? Um, one of the, the main goals of this campaign is to ask 100% of your employees if they would like to participate. So if they say, no, I don't want to participate, you say thank you very much and take the form back. Okay? Don't take it. It's not, don't take it personally. We get told no all day long. And so, you know, it, it is what it is, right? But the goal is, is to offer it to state employees. Um, I know your kickoff is next Tuesday. I'm looking forward to being here and seeing all of you. Um, I believe it's in the Breezeway at Headquarter One. <laughs> I'm learning all these new things. Headquarters One, so there'll be a, um, some nonprofits out there to speak, to provide information to your employees and to you. 
So if you, um, I, if David needs help, I'm sure he would be more than grateful to get help from you guys. Thank you. So your main goal is to ask employees, collect the pledge forms, audit them, and give them back to us. Okay. It is an educational campaign. It's not about selling Beanie Babies or T-shirts or, you know, going on long walks or anything like that. It's just to ask and provide the information. And that's why the nonprofits are very important um, for them to come out, for them to distribute information. Um, you know, there's, there's, there's such a variety of nonprofits available, um, from animals to health care to saving the river. I'm going to uh, let Lieutenant Phil Cooper talk about his nonprofit that he's very involved with uh, for a second because, you know, it's very dear to him. It's, it's um, very uh, important to him, and, and he's going to explain why. All right, well, good morning. Um, glad to be here. My name is Phil Cooper, as Shannon said. Um, and I do work for the Highway Patrol. I have for the last 20-some years. I want to age myself. Um, but before that, I was a veteran. I served with the United States Navy for over nine years. Uh, the, the charitable or nonprofit organization that I work with is called Project Hero. And what Project Hero is, is they're an entity that helps rehabilitate and bring back into society or wean people off of drugs or prescription drugs, um, those veterans and first responders that have been injured as a result of their service, right? So whether it's a traumatic brain injury, um, PTSD, missing an arm or a leg or a quad amputee, you know, it just, it runs the gamut. And, and what Project Hero does is it helps rehabilitate them and helps give them um, an avenue to speak with like-minded people or speak with type A personalities or get out there and rehabilitate through cycling, right? I'm an avid cyclist, I cycle all the time, and it's, you know, it's kind of interesting coming into this role and help run this campaign on how my paths cross. Um, what we do is we run organized rides throughout the year. We have one in the greater Sacramento area um, and one in a week, which I'm going to participate in. I'll, I'm one of 50 people that were chosen around the, the, the state to help assist injured veterans and first responders go from Santa Cruz to Ventura um, over a five-day period. And, you know, I don't know if you've seen the bikes or the trikes with the poles or people, you know, helping someone um, climb up those hills. But those little mini challenges are challenges and um, successes that, people that have served this country or helped protect and serve everyone here, um, they look forward to, and that's how they grow, and that's how they integrate back into society. So the donations and the sponsorships programs like Our Promise, um, you know, $5 times 300,000 people is a lot of money. And uh, so we use that money to build bikes and trikes and specialized um, bicycles for whatever reason. I didn't bring the handout, but um, you know, one particular individual was a quad amputee. He served in the Army, um, got hit by an IED, lost his arms and his legs, and all he wanted to do was get back into society, reintegrate that back into with, with people and feel like he was just like you and I. Um, you know, not that he's any lesser of a person or, or more of one, but uh, he was fitted with prosthetics and through donations or programs like Our Promise, we built a specialized bike that has uh, hand controls um, and pedal controls for his prosthetics to help him brake and shift and basically ride a bike probably better than I can today. So those are some of the things that Project Hero does. Uh, there's a women's initiative that works with women only. Uh, we partnered with Georgetown and Texas A&M to develop um, kind of like a smartwatch that goes on um, people's wrists that helps predict when they're going to have a, a PTSD moment or a traumatic brain injury moment. And it helps warn them to 
work on their therapy or take their medication or call a friend or do whatever they need to do to prevent that attack from occurring. So those are kind of some of the things that it happens. Um, really, it's, you know, regardless of whether it's Project Hero, it's, you know, the dog rescue, it's, you know, Weave, or whatever the case may be, your guys' responsibility and your guys' importance in this project can't be undersold because if I take this form and, you know, I pick it up and I just go, you know, hey, today is the campaign season, why don't you go ahead and take that and fill it out? What's she going to do? Well, most likely it's going to go in the round file, which there's nothing wrong with that, right? But if I sit here and spend a few minutes and tell you, you know, my story or what's important to me or what's important to this organization or your group or your group, how much further does that go, right? And how much less explaining do you need to help fill out that form when it's important to you and it means something to you? So, you know, think about that as this goes. And, uh, you know, make the story personal. Make it something that is important to you that helps, for the lack of better words, sell the, the, the giving, right? Because uh, that's really what it comes down to. Um, you know, Shannon and I, one of my responsibilities is Sac State. I have about 25 state agencies. She's got about 20 to 25 state agencies that this is all we do for four or five months. And Sac State has... So, has not sold, but has donated more money per university than any other university in the state in the UC system. They have for several years. Um, and they're very proud of that. And the president of Sac State, this is very large, um, very tall Texan, wears boots, walks around just like a typical person would, you know, think a Texan would be. Um, very stoic man. And I've heard him speak on a number of occasions, and a uh, very intelligent speaker, captivates the audience, and um, he was brought to tears when he was telling his staff and his team that were running the thing about the homeless people and the assistance that this university is providing to the homeless to get homeless food and shelter and clothes and an education at Sac State. Um, so much so that many of the people in the room were crying or needed tissues or whatever the case may be. So, you know, how much more powerful is that story and how much more influence does that individual have when that's the way that he moves the crowd or that's the way that he, he talks about why this campaign or why this entity or why this organization is so um, heartfelt and, and invested in this, right? Because it is five bucks, you know? I have a cup of coffee over here there's a couple of people that have a cup of coffees, right? You can, can you do with, without one cup of coffee a month? Less. Because that's really what it is, right? Five bucks. So, you know, think of it in that way. It comes out of your check. You never miss it. You never notice it's gone, and you just keep moving down your way. But that helps so many more people in so many different ways. It's, it's kind of crazy. So I'll get off my high horse. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Phil. Um, to, to piggyback off of um, what he said about the Sac State president, there's two employees that work at Sac State who, whose son um, passed away of alcoholism at 32 years old. They started a nonprofit. It's called Josh's Heart, and it helps people who are homeless or um, not even, not necessarily just homeless, just anybody who's fighting with addiction. Um, with some kind of a disease and so forth. And what they do is they, they collect items, they um, turn them into backpacks, and they walk around Sacramento or, or have uh, locations where they pass these things out. And they want everyone to feel loved, to feel special, and that they're not alone. Um, that's just one of the, the nonprofits that we've met. We had the opportunity as part of this program to work at Make-A-Wish for a day. And that was, talk about um, needing a tissue. You know, they, they help um, children 
they grant children wishes, children who, who don't have necessarily a bright future ahead of them. Um, it's very endearing, it's very um, emotional, but it, it's a good thing, right? Uh, last week we worked at Loaves and Fishes down on C Street in downtown Sacramento where they have, um, they provide meals to homeless guests or th those in need, th those are, that are hungry, and they don't charge them. So a as Phil said, $5 times 300000 can go a long way. Okay. So are there any questions? Y'all are quiet. You don't have any questions yet? Oh, see, I knew you did. Hi. Yeah, I know the minimum is $5. Mm -hmm. Is there a cap, or can they do a percentage? There's, okay, so the minimum is $5 a month. The maximum is whatever you can give. There is no cap. So um, you do favors? I you can. You pass a microphone. If the people watching, they don't know what she asked because she needs to Oh. You can please repeat. Thank you. Please. Okay, thank you. Okay, so I'm sorry for those watching. Her question was, is there a minimum and a maximum? Um, the minimum, of course, is $5. The maximum is whatever you can give. Now, I'll go over it in a few minutes about how you do that, because the form only has a section for a couple of um, write-ins, but, but we, we'll go over that in just a second, okay? So that's what we're going to jump into is the pledge form. Wrong, wrong table. So you all received one of these, a key connector toolkit which has a lot of valuable information in it. And if you switch over to page six, thank you, there is a copy of the pledge form if you don't already have one. So the pledge form changed a little bit this year, but not significantly. And, and it's very easy to fill out. There's just a few things you need to remember. Um, as a key connector, again, your responsibility is to get the information out to your staff, your employees, to get it back, to review it, to make sure that everything is good on it, and then to give it to David. Okay. So with the pledge form this year, box A is with your social security number. So the forms come pre-printed. They come pre-printed from the state controller's office, from the payroll of either, I think it's April or May. So whatever was, whoever was working for the state in May will get a form with, with pre-printed. So if you moved after that, you know, you promoted, demoted, um, moved to agencies, you, you might not have a form. So you would use a blank form and fill it in. But if you get a pre-printed form, which they're gonna give you today, it should have your social security number in box A, your name in box B, your agency code in box C. A lot of people don't know those. I don't know what your agency code is. Uh, we've got a couple of different ones. Okay, so they've got a few. <laughs> okay, all right. Um, and then unit is your reporting unit. And then box E, there will be a three-digit code in there. For those here in Sacramento, it will usually be 024. That's the Sacramento region. If you're in San Diego, it uh, might be 020. I'm not quite sure of the codes, but it will be for the area that you work in. If you get a form and it has a triple X in it, so you're going through your forms, and you're going to get ready to pass them out, and you see a form that has a triple X in it, that means that person is not a current donor. So you might, this is a tip, you might want to give them a little extra um, when you speak to them because they might go from not being a donor to a donor. And those are the people you want to, to, to focus on and make sure that they have the information and hopefully change their mind and allow them to participate. Going back to box number B, employee's name. This is what is printed on your pay warrant. So my name is Shannon Lou Walling. My pay warrant comes with SL Walling. That's what needs to be in box B. If you um, have a blank form, 
try to put down what is on the pay warrant for the person's name or make sure that when you're looking at their forms that that's what's in box number B. If your name is Robert and you go by Bob, don't put Bob, put R and then the last name, okay? If the agency box isn't filled out, we will take care of that. Don't, don't really worry about that a whole lot and the reporting unit number as well. It's good to have that information, but if you don't know it, it's not a, a deal breaker. So step number one is to provide your information. Name, home address, city, state, zip, phone number, and a personal email. They ask for personal emails because they have found that state workers move around a lot. So if you have a, an email from last year, it might not be valid next year. And the reason why they ask for this information is because if for some reason your nonprofit either goes out of business, loses its 501c3 status, they will contact you and ask you who you would like to donate to instead of the one that you had chosen. Okay, and if they can't reach you, then it will go into the United Way Fund. It'll still go for a good cause. It just won't go to the one that you designated. And it's um, very important to the, the our promise in the United Way staff that it goes to the one that the person designates. And check the box if you're making a donation but would like to stay anonymous. They don't sell your information. They don't provide it to anybody else, but they will send you a thank you letter, um, maybe a correspondence once in a while, but it's very rare. Um, but if you don't want to receive anything, you would mark that box. Step number two is to manage the payroll deduction. So if you have a triple X up in box number E and you want to start, this is where you would check the box that says start payroll deduction. If you have numbers up there, and this, is, this goes back to auditing your forms, if there's a number in box number E, they shouldn't be starting because they're already participating. So if you're starting and you want to give $5 a month, you would put the $5 in there times 12 equals box number G. Yes, ma'am. That's okay. What if at this point, like you said, if it's already filled in, that means they're already contributing. Mm -hmm. What if they're like, oh yeah, you know what, I don't, I want to stop contributing mm -hmm. at this point. I'll go get to that next. Okay. Okay, so for those watching, her question was if, if they want to stop, what do they do? So we'll, we're going to get to that next. Um, okay, so if you go down to number three, change payroll deduction. If they're currently giving and they want to increase, hopefully they increase, you know, chances, you know, sometimes somebody might want to decrease and that's okay too. They would fill in box or um, area number three they would fill in their new amount in box H, times it by 12, equals their total annual donation, which goes in box I. If they want to just remain, let's, for example, if they give $5 a month and they want to change their nonprofit, they would, um, you don't have to fill out a box and times it, but you would fill out box number four and then go down to box number 10 and write in their, their uh, new nonprofit that they want to give to. Number five, box number five is if they want to stop. So if you, if uh, again, go to box E, if you have three digits in there and they just want to stop, they don't want to participate anymore, they would fill out box number five, make sure their social security number is in there, and sign and date it. If they have a triple X, they would not fill out box number five because they are currently not contributing. So does, does that make sense? Yes, ma'am. Excuse me. So in the stop payroll deduction, they, then you also need to write their social security number in that box as well as the top? So it needs to be in both places? No. Just okay, so her question was is if they want to stop, do they need to put your social security bo number in box number five? No. It only goes in box number A. If they want to just write a check out, give you cash, they would fill out box number six and write in the, the gift amount. And number seven is if they do not wish to participate in the R Promise program. And that would be again if, if they have the triple X 
in box E and they say, no, I'm not going to participate, thank you very much, they would fill out box number seven. Box number eight is if you want to give after you retire. So if you are um, anticipating that you're going to retire, say, in June of uh, 2019, you could check box number eight, write down your estimated retirement date, and, of course, how much you want to give. And then what happens is, is they come June, All Promise checks the CalPERS website, and if, they're, if that person is in the system, then they would start deducting from there. And then box number nine is for those who currently give who don't want to make any changes at all. Uh, step number three, box number 10, is where you would select your nonprofits. So if you go to the rpromiseca.org website, um, there is, you, can, you can look up any kind of nonprofit that has been vetted through the R Promise. You can also, if, if they are not in there, if the, the charity of your choice is not in there, you can go to guidestar.org and look up international um, types of charities. They might, you know, there's, there's thousands and thousands of charities. Um, that would all be on the guidestar.org website. Those who choose to um, make an application through Our Promise will be on the Our Promise website as well. Does that make sense? Any questions? Yes, ma'am. So um, for the, those that have retired, we had a couple of people retire like in the last couple of months, and their forms are here. Mm -hmm. No. So her question was, is if she had um, employees retire in the last, say, six months, should you mail the forms to them? No, you don't have to mail the forms to them. They, they have the opportunity to, to contribute, or they can still contribute by going to um, our Promise website and signing up that way. Okay. So it's important to put the nonprofit organization code in um, box number 10. And that's where you look it up on the Our Promise website. If you don't know it, there's an organization code. And that code is different than their 501c3 code. If you don't have um, their 5013c code, look it up to get the organization code in the Our Promise website. And it's really cool. If you haven't looked at it, go, you know, take a few minutes to go and look at it. Um, you type in, you, you, you go in, under the nonprofit area and you can type in animals. And all the animals, will, or all the foundations with animals will come up. Um, if you typed in, um, you know, women, just put in the search bar, everything will come up, and you, you can uh, look at, at uh, what's available that way. Okay. And then again, $5 a month minimum times 12 equals the total annual donation. If the charity of your choice is not on the All Promise website, but you found it on GuideStar or you're familiar with it, it's a PTA, a church, a Girl Scouts, um, whatever, whatever the case may be, you would write them in below that where it says select a nonprofit not certified but has a 501c3 filing. You would write, write in their name, their address, phone number, their 501c3 number, and then again, your minimum donation times 12, equals total. And then box number 11 is where you sign and date it. So a couple things to remember. If there are any changes to your, your paycheck through this program, you need to have your social security number in there and you need to sign and date it. If, if they're not participating and they don't want to participate, they don't have to sign and date it. Okay. Any questions? Will you emphasize that the uh, uh, state controller is the one who needs this uh, social security number? Absolutely. There you go. David said, will I emphasize that the state controller is asking for the social? Again, if it has anything to do with the paycheck, they don't know, they don't know me from you from you, they go by your social security number. They don't go by your reporting unit number, your agency, anything like that. It's social security number. 
and though that is who requires that because it has to come out of your pay warrant. They're not going to just take it from anybody. They will use your number and then, of course, signing and dating it. And it, this is all on the back of the form as well. If you have any questions, just refer to the back and it gives you um, the information. Okay, so there are a couple questions that people ask. What is the overhead of our promise? The overhead is 14%. Let me get to the right slide, sorry. And so the 14%, I'm sorry. The 14% um, is a basic fee that any business, any nonprofit, everybody has an overhead. Okay? You can't run a business without having one. And so what does that cover? It covers um, the state controller who, who handles all of the, the deducting of your paychecks, takes a 35 cent um, cut charge right off of the top. And in your uh, information it says 41 cents, and that's because these were printed before the state controller changed it and lowered it. And it hasn't been lowered in a long time, but this year they lowered it. So they, the, the fee comes right off the top, so you give your $5, then $0.35 cents comes right off of it, that for uh, the state controller's fee. Um, then the 14% goes to the R Promise. And what that covers, it covers all of the materials. It covers the donor resource guide, which I'll go over in a, in a second. Um, the pledge form processing and printing. It covers posters, maintenance of the website and so forth. So in your um, slides, there's an example of um, how much is actually donated to your nonprofit. So for example, if Susan signs up for a $20 a month contribution, the state controller, of course, takes, according to the slide, it's 41 cents. And I can't do math, especially on the fly, so I'm just going to go with what's in here. <laughs> Um, so they take 41 cents. Our promise then receives $19.59. 14% equates to about $2.74. And so they keep that part. And then $16.85 is the portion that is directed to the nonprofit. Okay, any questions? Okay. Um, so a lot of people are reluctant to give their so bless you, um, to give their social security number out, and that is required, as I said, to take anything from your paycheck, the state controller, and also ask you to sign the confidentiality form, so that by signing that, and if somebody says to you, you know, I'm reluctant to give you my social security number, there's a couple different things they can do. You can tell them that you did sign a confidentiality form that we keep on file. Or they can simply put it in an envelope, seal it, and provide those. If you don't need to necessarily open them, you can keep them. Um, and then David will, um, David and I and Christy, when we decide to go through and audit the forms, we will open those personally and deal with those separately. So if there's some reluctance, you can ensure um, the, the uh, employee that their, confident, their information is safe with you. Okay. So you might also get a question or two about why can't the employee just write a check to their favorite nonprofit? They can certainly do that. Any kind of a donation helps the nonprofit. If they do it through our promise or if they send them a check personally. Either way, they're going to benefit, right? Um, you know, again, some of the benefits of doing it through the our promise is that the, the nonprofits are aware that it's coming, that they know it's going to be there, and they can forecast their budget through that. Okay. If you have a question um, or if somebody's reluctant, 
as Phil said, you know, a cup of coffee might cost four or five dollars or even more. Um, one of our, our coworkers went to Jamba Juice and it was like eight dollars the other day just for, for one drink. Um, if you have five dollars taken out of your check um, beforehand, you, you won't even miss it. Okay, And that five dollars goes a long way. In the donor resource guide, there, did they get these, David? <coughs> No, okay. That's okay. Perfect. Well, um, if if he might be able to send out another link, or you can go on the Our Promise website. It's the same thing as him sending out the link, ourpromiseca.org, and this is on there. Um, they try to save money by not printing so many. I don't know if some of you remember a few years ago they used to have this big telephone book with all of the nonprofits in there. It was very costly to print that. So they put it on the website. Um, but in here, it talks a lot about where your contributions go and what it does. And it gives you examples. You know, $5 provides a child a safe environment for HIV testing with counseling and education for the whole family. Um, a gift of $150 will feed a dog for three months. $25 buys 15 nutritious meals served to the neighbors who are hungry in your community. So those are just some of the examples. And you, know, you might not give $150. It might just be the minimum of $60 per year times 300,000. goes a long way. Okay. Um, I did forget to go back and answer the, the lady's question. If you have back on your pledge form, if you want to give $10 to 10 different nonprofits per month, there's not a lot of room in here. There's no more than four lines. So what can you do? You can um, put in like a Word document or even write it on a piece of paper. It's preferred if it's typed. You can attach a paper with um, the, the, if you have more than four nonprofits, you're most welcome to do that. So you would just fill out the same thing that you do here. You would write the nonprofit name, the organization code, how much you want to give to that nonprofit time. You have 20 different nonprofits. Attach a sheet of paper with that information. Okay. Are there any questions? Okay, so you've done all this work, and now you're getting the forms back. So what do you do now? Um, if you go back to your KCC toolkit on page number nine, there are the steps for auditing. And do, do you want to talk a little bit about the auditing um, after I'm done or about how you want them back? Uh, yeah. Okay. I can step in as soon as. Okay. okay. So, what to do? So, all these forms got to come back 300,000 forms, right? Mm -hmm. So, when you get forms back, if you refer to page number nine and just go over the basic um, steps, it will help David and Christy when they all come back and then when they come to me as well. So you're, what you're going to do is when you get all these forms back, you're going to sort them. So stack number one is going to be your new payroll deductions. Anybody that has a triple X in box number E and they're starting will go over here, box number or stack number one. If anything they want to change out, the nonprofit, etc., will go in stack number two. If they want to keep everything the way it is, not change a thing, that will be stack number three. If they want to keep everything the way it is and um, just change their contact information, that will be stack stop. Number E will be a three digit number. That means they're a current contributing, now they want to stop. That'll be a stack number five. And then if you have any one-time donations, gifts, that will be an, another stack. If they want to give after retirement, will be another stack. If they want to decline, that will be another stack. And so then when you bundle all of those up, you've reviewed them, you've made sure that they're all correct, then they're going to come back to David. And um, each department runs their campaign a little bit differently, so I'm going to let David speak for a second about how he wants the forms to come back to him.
Okay, good morning. Uh, uh, like Shannon was saying, that uh, we're going to fill out the forms. We're going to go through and make sure that, uh, you know, if they're making any changes, that the state controller is going to have a social security number, and uh, we're going to go through and uh, organize them uh, by whether they're starting uh, making a change. Is this coming through? Okay. Um, making a change or uh, stopping donation. Uh, as far as the forms that are going to be marked make no change, those are going to stay with you. Those are going to basically go in the recycle bin. Uh, if, uh, if there's no need to make a change, there's no need for a social security number, and uh, you, know, you can uh, you know, not worry about sending on and causing the mailroom more work, causing yourself more work, causing anyone else more work. Um, beyond that, are there any questions that, uh, that you guys have about filling out? Yes. Yes, um, if uh, the question was if, uh, if, if there, the question was if there's no change, uh, you don't have to give uh, the forms correct. If they're marking box nine, then you keep the forms, toss them in the recycle bin. Oh, wait, that actually changed this year. Hold on, new news. If they're currently contributing and there's no changes, they do need to come back. So the question is, is if they are not currently contributing and they decline, you would wrap those up and put them in the confidential shred. It has to be XXS. XXX, they don't want to participate. Any other questions? Yes. We have blank forms. Uh, they're available on the website. Uh, I think we have a couple extra hard copies, but uh, uh, you can print one out from the Our Promise website. You can fill out uh, the form from the website and print it, so uh, not all of it has to be handwritten. Any other questions? Yes. The, the question was, do we have to audit and make sure that everyone has a form? Uh, California law states that everyone has to have the opportunity to donate. Uh, we try and ensure that everyone knows they have the opportunity to donate. Uh, if they don't specifically have a form and they've been informed that they have the opportunity, then, you know, if they didn't get a form and they don't want one, that's fine. Uh, but if, uh, if we don't know and it's easier to just drop a blank form on their desk and say, hey, talk to me about this when you're ready, that's, that's a perfectly acceptable plan. Any other questions? Yes. Um, the question is, uh, how do they send? Uh, how do we send forms back to me? And the answer is, inner office envelope is the best route. If that's not available to you, uh, then courier, or we can make another arrangement. Uh, they will have confidential information, but our mailroom does handle lots of confidential ma mail on a daily basis, so that's not a problem if you send it in our office envelope. Yes? Uh, 
the question was about requesting confidential envelopes, and the United Way does have their own uh, confidential envelopes. You can use those. You can use the ones that DCA provides that are the big red and white ones that say confidential on them. You can take the regular brown one and mark it confidential. The mailroom treats all of those as confidential. All right, if there's no more questions, then we'll wrap it up. So again, again, I just wanna thank you all for coming and for participating in this. If you were asked to do it, voluntold, or if you requested to do it, it is appreciated. Um, you're, you, they call you a key connector for a reason because you are key to the campaign. Um, are there any other questions? Okay, if there is any, I'm sure David would be more than happy to answer them for you or Christy, or you can always contact myself. Um, David can give you that information. Um, I think that they're on the website too, um, there's a link on how to get a hold of me as well. Okay, so again, thank you very much.